Hey tryhards, Ethan here. Before we get into the show today, I want to talk to you guys about Patreon. Patreon is a donation service, a monthly subscription service where you donate money to me to support the show, to support uh, the growth of it, whether that means merchandise or more podcasts or other things of that nature. And I would really appreciate if you guys will be willing and able to give just a little bit of whatever extra money you may have. Because while the show will always be free for everyone to listen, um, the way to make it isn't. And I'm in college, and things are expensive. So I'd appreciate any little amount that you're able to give. So thank you for donating, and thank you even more for listening. Hello, my name is Ethan Hewlin. Like you, I live in a world that never stops moving. Also like you, I have stories. These are my stories. The true stories of a tryhard. Welcome back to True Stories of a Tryhard. I am Ethan Hewlin, and this week is yet again just me, the microphone, and you, listener. Now, this episode, as with some of the other ones in the past, is going to be um, a little bit triggering for some people, just based on um, content alone, which is why I like to keep the episodes with me a little bit shorter and this whole show under an hour, just because of the subject matter. So let's get into it. This episode is about bullying, both the bullying that I experienced, and the bullying that I was responsible for. Yes, you heard me. I was a bully. But we'll get to that in a minute. Starting off with um, probably as far back as I can remember, in preschool, I was left out of a lot of things. And you'll see that as a recurring theme throughout the course of the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, I was left out because I was shy. I was weird. I never quite fit in with the other kids. I didn't really want, I didn't really fit in. I didn't know how. And to a certain extent, I still don't. And that got some reception that wasn't exactly good for my four- and five-year-old self-esteem, because up to that point I hadn't really been out of the house that much. Um, From the ages of birth to three, my mom stayed home with me, so I didn't really get a chance to have much separation from her, except for once a week when we go to church. So this was entirely new to me, and I had no frame of reference for what to expect. I had no friends. I didn't know any other kids except for maybe our neighbors. And as a result, I was more of a standoffish kid. And when I tried to make myself some friends with the other kids, it didn't always go the way I wanted. And, like, when uh, one memory clearly sticks out when I was about four, maybe five, those were the two years I was in preschool, um, I tried to get into a a little sing-along with some of my friends, or those who I thought of as friends when you're four and five, which just means you're in the same room for more than three hours. And essentially what those kids had decided was that I wasn't welcome. And I was kind of brushed off to the side, so if it still sticks in my memory 15 years later, that means that something clearly was significant in there. A couple years after that, kindergarten. Uh, I touched on this a little bit previously, but here I want to go a little bit more in depth. Um, I was a bit of a chubby kid when I was younger. Not a lot, but apparently it was enough for um, a set of twins. I'm not going to say their names because I don't really think that it's really relevant. Um, But they would make fun of me because I was a bit chubbier. And come to find out that the phrase... An often repeated adage, hurting people hurt people, is very, very true, and you'll find out how true that is in a bit. But they had a not-so-great home life. 
They were being raised by a single mom with three older siblings, one of whom was about to go off to college, and they didn't quite know what to do with what was going on inside of them. So as a result, they took it out on me, the gentle, taller kid who was kind of shy and a little bit on the bigger side, who didn't really know how or where to fit in. And it eventually culminated in, I don't even remember how we got there, but me going to the principal's office with them and essentially being stared down by my elementary school principal, Mrs. Webb. And she looked at me and she said, are you crying? And I was, so I nodded. And she said, do you see me crying? I I shook my head, no. And she said, then why do you need to cry? And so because I was scared of her, I decided it was in my best interest to stop crying. Like I had with other people in my life to that point. And I gripped my teeth and tried to suck it up. A couple of years later, in second grade, that was when the seeds of divorce were being sown throughout my house. And I had a very similar situation to my boys from kindergarten, where I had no idea what to do with the anger, the confusion, the hundreds of emotions that were happening all inside of me at the same time. So I lashed out at people. And I willingly became both a bully and a kleptomaniac. I'm exaggerating to prove a point, but I did steal things at that age. Nothing huge. Just a little something here and there, whether it's one of my mom's bracelets or a little coin purse from Walmart or something else that seemed valuable at the time. I just took it, put it in my pocket, and put that into a lunchbox that I kept under my bed. And until I was 14 years old, that lunchbox remained somewhere in my room where no one else could find it. And it changed hiding places so that nobody could find it. And I put them in a box that I used as my nightstand along with some old books. So that way nobody would really suspect anything. But eventually, I felt that that was no longer a part of me that I needed to preserve. So I returned all the things that I had stolen, in some way, shape, or form, to those that could be returned to. I returned the jewelry I'd stolen from my mom. I That was really the big one, and I did it when she wasn't looking, so that way she didn't even know that I had stolen it to begin with, which I don't think she did. But enough about that. Um, the ultimate reason I'm telling you this is because that is one of the ways that I would um, bully other people, is I used to take their stuff. I saw a calculator that I really wanted. I thought it looked cool because it was a calculator that it was a cylinder, and you would open it up, and there would be numbers on one side, and there was like a little magnetic note, like an Etch-A-Sketch on the other side with a stylus and stuff, and you could, like, roll it, and the colors would change. It's kind of hard to describe, but I just thought it was really cool, and other people had it, and I really wanted it, so I found somebody who had one, and I took it, and I put it in my desk, and my teacher caught me. So that day, I was sent to the principal's office, and my dad had to come and get me from school, and I got a very thorough yelling after that because both he and I knew what was on the table and neither of us really liked where it was going and neither of us really knew what to do with ourselves. So that was second grade and from from there on out I really tried not to keep up that image of myself as someone who was hurting as someone who was not doing great in the world, even though it was 
pretty obvious to everyone around me because I'm a really bad liar. Always have been. And that kind of worked. We often become what we pretend to be, or at least we believe that we are who we pretend to be. And I pretend to be someone who had all his stuff together. Someone who thought he knew everything about the world and thought he had his whole life planned out ahead of him. Well, that came back to bite me. This is a story I've told before. I'm going to tell it again because it fits in a different context. When I was 17 years old, about the... um, It was in the first semester of my junior year of high school. A group of people that I had come to know throughout the past couple of years that I thought of as friends... We had Halloween parties together, we had gone to school dances as a group together, we had done a lot of a lot of things together. We were rarely at um, any specific place without some amount of members of this group all at the same time. They essentially disowned me because of something I'd said. Several things that I'd said, and I didn't quite know how to deal with that either. That was the last time I really experienced bullying on a level like that. And ultimately, it almost cost me the life I'm living now, because I didn't want to go down that path again. I didn't want to deal with the negativity, the hurt, the same feelings that I had felt before, the same trauma and anxiety and depression that I experienced before, but it came back, and it came back hard. Because for those of you who have listened for a long time will remember, I almost took my own life when I was 17 years old. Until I reached out to one of the people in that friend group, I'm hoping to have her on here one day. Um, her name is Audrey. I reached out to Audrey, and I essentially explained to her what was going on and how I was feeling, and I said, I can't keep doing this anymore. And she told me something that I'll never forget. She said, Ethan, I'm sorry you feel the way you do, but I will do everything I can to fix that. And from there, there was a long, difficult process of repairing those relationships, which ultimately, you know, when you get out of high school, you don't really realize how many of those relationships are just there because you're stuck in the same concrete box for seven hours a day. But in that moment, and for the rest of my high school career, those people became friends again after we cleared up the misunderstanding. But ultimately, after that, I realized something. And it's that if you have to impress people in order to get them to be friends with you, they're not really your friends. They're your fans. They're only friends. And I, I know you can't see the air quotes, but I'm using them. They're only friends with you because of something that you do or say or because you have a big house or because you have uh, a nice car or you're the guy who gets the alcohol for the parties or whatever. I was never that guy. I was just spitballing. So for those of you who are being bullied in any way, shape, or form, I see you, I hear you, and I relate to you. That being said... Thank you all for listening to True Stories of a Tryhard. You can find me on Instagram at ethan.t.hewlin. You can find me on Twitter at etphonehome. Those are zeros and the e's are threes. Feel free to DM me if you're feeling bullied or, or threatened in any way, because I will be more than happy to talk with you. Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at True Stories Pod. The best way to get the word out about podcasts is via word of mouth and social media, so please, please, please share this with your friends, share it on your social media, 
And if you post it in some way and tag me, you will get featured on the official podcast accounts. And please feel free to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would very much appreciate it. I'll be back with more stories next week. So until then, this is Ethan Hewlin signing off.